Welcome to episode two of the Creative Podcast, uh, Creative Struggle. Um, we, um, you know, kind of originally started this podcast just being like, hey, let's just sit down, let's make this happen. Um, would you mind just giving us a quick, like, 30 second elevator pitch on kind of <laughs> who you are, you know, the projects you're working yeah. on, and, and what you're striving for? Yeah. Um, so, my name is Noah Wainwright. I am 20 years old, if you care. Um, <laughs> Um, um, but yeah, I am currently a, like I'm going into my junior year of university and studying business management and, um, marketing. Mm -hmm. And currently right now I'm kind of all over the place in terms of creative things. I'm, um, doing music. I am getting a lot more into graphic design, um, working with, my dad and just with an internship so I'm kind of flexing that muscle a little bit more and learning which is a lot of fun um let's see what else uh kind of getting into the marketing realm as well um I really like the balance of the business and the creativity in that and content creation and all that stuff you know hashtag Gary V yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so far that's that's been it um Ooh. summer's flown by yeah, it really has. Yeah, it has. So, where do you see yourself going with marketing? Yeah. Um, well, I think that just within just within life, you have to market yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so, I can see myself um, just, I think, in the most root form of it just using it as a as a soft skill almost in terms of marketing myself marketing whatever projects or work that i have going on um but i think where i really see myself is potentially incorporating that with either like a small business or right. just my design work um i really like the the synchronicity of the visual, the design, um, and the shapes and colors and negative space and all that stuff with the marketing and how um, not only images speak to you and how you know action is taken place generally through an image um, and the power of that, but um, like the psychology as well is fascinating. So I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out and um yeah understand just that whole world but yeah so far that's where i see myself but who knows that could that could change yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, let's take it all the way back so you say you're into graphic design mm -hmm. um i know that your dad has his own business and he does that yeah. um was it through i'm guessing was it through him that you saw an interest in that was it through just your own doodles and arts and whatever else that you were like, oh, this is kind of cool, something I want to pursue. Yeah. Uh, what was it in particular that uh, made you want to pursue graphic design? Yeah, um, well, I think just through osmosis, like being around my dad, he worked from home and I was homeschooled. So, you know, I would come into his office and be like, hey dad, what are you working on? Or I'd even do homework, you know, in his office and just kind of be around him as he was working. So. Yeah, I think just through the osmosis of being around him kind of sparked my interest with it. Mm. Um, granted, I'm not the best designer. I'm still mm. learning. And I think my approach is different um, in the sense of just the way that my mind works. Um, generally, I don't know. This is another thing that I'm still figuring out um, right. in terms of my creative voice and everything. But um, yeah, I don't know. It, I think it just started off with really me messing around with photos and photography. Um, and then, yeah, I really like black and white. So that, you know, messing around with that and then uh, importing it into Lightroom and then messing around and then. I don't know, just being destructive with the image and making collages out of it or um, turning the grain setting all the way up and distorting it and kind of exploring that way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess that process and that process still is just exploring and um, 
just kind of creating without a knowledge of um, uh, I don't know the fundamentals mm -hmm. of of design or like the uh, the it's not arithmetic it's I don't know the schooling you right. know whatever the fundamentals the fundamentals yeah. Yeah. So, yeah 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 that's good man yeah yeah what about you Josh um so I well mainly do video and mm -hmm. photography so I use Lightroom as well yeah um Premiere and like all of that um but yeah I I like explored a little bit um of graphic design mm -hmm. Um, like, well, I made our logo. Mm -hmm. Oh, sick. Show, so, okay. like, Great I know, job. like, just, like, the basic stuff in, um, Great. like, Illustrator uh -huh. and Photoshop. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much where that ends, with, like, graphic design. Yeah. But I feel like it does, like, <clears throat> photography and graphic design, they do, like, mm -hmm. go hand in hand, kind right. of. And there's a lot of, like, aspects that transfer. Yeah. Through both um, art forms. Yeah. So. And I think, too, with just even going back to the marketing too and like Luke I know that you're big into marketing and content yeah. creation as well mm -hmm. like there's this beauty in and this is one thing that I've noticed especially this summer is there's this beauty in art and business um, that I'm noticing more and more and like you can't you can't create an image and not market it and you can't create a video and not market it I mean you can but I mean, really, what point is there when yeah. you don't? Right. Um, so I don't know. I think it's everything is related in some form, and it's just like a bunch of cosmic spaghetti or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, well, that's awesome, man. What? How? Like, how have you developed your creative voice throughout the years? Um, I mean, just like you, I'm still working on it. It's like. I don't know if it like takes a lifetime to develop I, I wouldn't say that but it definitely takes a while to like actually develop what you're trying to say mm -hmm. and then make the art that like you know that what's the word <laughs> the like shows you know the right. message that you're trying to get across yeah. that like portrays that I think that's hard and you can definitely like overthink that mm -hmm. um but yeah, I'm I'm still developing my creative voice, and but it's cool because I've heard like marketing and business and like you said in creativity like they go so well together. Yeah. So that's a great like backing to have mm -hmm. when you're creative. Right. Um, that's probably what I'm gonna do as far as schooling. Okay. Yeah. Now, are you senior or um, like in college now? Senior in high school. Okay. Sick. Yeah, one more year. That's awesome. Yeah. How's it feeling? Um, good. Yeah, I'm gonna do Wabansi. Okay. Um, dual credit. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way out. to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's literally like every homeschooler I know generally <laughs> will do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The parents are always like, "Well, if I can just combine it into two, might as well just get it done." I mean, it's genius. Like, it yeah. You might as well. I'm like, I'm technically a senior because I did that, and it's like, yep. oh, it's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. But it kind of gives you some freedom. But what about you, Luke? How is your creative voice? Uh, expanded yeah so it's it's a little bit different uh, over the past couple of months it shifted to I was kind of freelancing for this not-for-profit I was you know kind of posting some social media content for them here and there uh, doing their conference every year which is actually this weekend yeah uh, which is crazy um, so I've been working with them for three four years and then in this past year I've been able to leverage uh, the time I've spent with them, that relationship to where I'm now getting paid to mm. uh, be their social media manager, help them to create content, make it contextual to the platform. Because you know, there's kind of there's kind of a couple of different tiers to content. You know, there's the right. surfacey content that gets you know the likes and the comments and you know a little bit of this and that. And then there's the next two steps uh, where you bring actual value, so yeah. consumer centric value. Um, it, it's content that. Um, it's not just, hey, cool motivation, all right, let's get this done, guys, you can do it, chase your dreams. It's more of like, hey, here's something that, uh, for instance, uh, I've been starting to work with my brother who owns a CrossFit gym, nice. and talking to him of, hey, look, how can we create consumer-centric content for you? 
literally yeah. like go over some of the movements some of the particular things that you see with the athletes that come in and say hey let's let's sit down and let's break down this movement let's yeah. talk about it um, and put that video out and then you see what kind of works what doesn't I mean you have to test things out you can't just expect mm -hmm. one thing to just work so you have to kind of play around but the more the more value you give yeah. and uh, what that does is it allows by giving value mm -hmm. um, you can then make an ask you know so this is you know a year or two down the road when you've built enough of an audience it's kind of like with gary v you know he he gives so much value that when he's like hey guys uh sign up for yummy text or or empathy yeah. wines or hey yo i just dropped this new book everyone's like 20 bucks sure. or 100 bucks or 150 bucks a couple thousand dollars sure i'll i'll drop that i mean this guy's given me way more value than that yeah. and so they're willing to drop this uh you know, and support basically anything he does because he gives so much value. And he, when he does make the ask, it's every once in a while, and it's after he has given people enough value. So right. it's not like right off the bat. It's like if they think of any YouTuber, if they you know you got a hundred subscribers, like hey guys, drop my new merch, go get it. And your mom <laughs> and your cousin are gonna buy it, yeah. and that's it. <laughs> but now you see all these YouTubers starting to uh, create their own brands, like Emma Chamberlain. She had now mm. has her own coffee. Um, you know, wow. it's, it's cool to see other YouTubers start to, you know, merch has always been yeah. you know, super, super big, but see a lot of other people push audience towards that of like, Hey, I have all this audience and all this attention. Where can I put this? Right. You know? Um, so really, really long answer to that, but I'm, I'm super stoked to, yeah. uh, be in this space and to learn and to, to have fun with it. You know, if you're not having fun with it, then you're just going to be miserable. Yeah. You know? Right. Speaking of creative, I know that you work with an art gallery out in LA. Mm -hmm. um, tell us more about that, man. I'd love to know. Yeah. Well, it's funny because there were a lot of things that you said um, that like my brain was just like, pew, 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 pew. Yeah, like I can go yeah. off. But um, yeah, so I'm working with an art collective in LA called No Wave. And they serve as both a like a, a collective, so artists kind of sign with them, and they are represented by No Wave. And then um, every once in a while, they'll have different events or shows in their gallery space, like physically in LA. But I think where they make generally their most revenue is through um, their online academy program. So they're really trying to explore like online learning and especially within like the art world so it's similar i would say it's like a skillshare but mm. like twice as more professional and i know it's just fresh um like the way it's shot the way that it's taught they they generally will bring in um artists who are professors or who are really good at teaching their craft um, so they do anything from oils to watercolor to photo collage to um, you know I think they're they're planning on doing a cinematography course soon as well so it's really cool and um, yeah I got connected with them through Instagram of all places um, and uh, yeah I mean it's been really like a really decent time and just you know kind of like what you said um you know trying to or at least striving to provide just a crap ton of value yep. and you know work 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 um but i mean through that process man i've just i've learned so much in terms of like okay this is how a small business is run this is or these are the the um just different elements that go into it. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, I'm really thankful for like my two bosses because both of them are pretty carefree and chill. And they're like, yeah, this is kind of our vision. And we talk about it and then they kind of just set me free to do whatever. Um, and so it's been like just a really great learning process in terms of, okay, where like what is my creative voice how can i align it with this company and um how can i over deliver like every mm -hmm. single project right and um yeah striving for that has been really cool and um i mean really it's 
all the glory goes to God for just the opportunities and, yeah. um, you know, chances that he's given me with this and with this company. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been really cool. So I'm excited to see what is in store for the future with it. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I tell my bosses all the time, like, you know, first of all, thank you for like providing this opportunity for me. But then second of all, like I have learned probably twice as much within these last three months working with them than I have in my last two years of university. Yeah. I was like, yeah. you know, the difference of being in class and learning it, you know, conceptually is one thing, but actually putting it to practice and working with deadlines and working with people and that back and forth of collaboration and like, Oh, I, I think that's really cool. This piece is really neat, but this should be changed or this layout should be a little bit different to convey this message. Maybe, Yeah. you know, so it's, it's really been a neat process of just learning as I go, growing as I go, being as cliche as it is like uncomfortable, or being comfortable in being uncomfortable, I think yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and you know, just striving to over deliver in that. So, hmm. yeah. Nice. But. Yeah. So I know you said you want to maybe start a business in the future. Mm -hmm. Would you like go that route, more of an art gallery, or hmm. like what would you do? Or do you not have any idea? Yeah, I really. Like, I think I've told Luke many times, like, as I've gotten older and as my interests have kind of increased and broadened, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could do this, I could do that, I could do this. But I think what I've really honed in on as of recent is I would love to be like a creative director um, because it, it perfectly combines like graphic design, writing, which I really enjoy writing, um, business and just kind of that creative mind it's like the synergy of creative and the business mind mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's the route that I'm going to take so whether that's opening up my own agency or um, I don't know perhaps working higher up you know as a creative director within maybe a smaller agency or something and I don't know, perhaps co-running it or, or something like that, yeah. um, at least to start. But in terms of the specifics, I'm not 100% sure. But, yeah. you know, I think that's kind of the route that I'm going to take. So, cool. but yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, what's, a, what's a book that you have uh, either oh, gifted geez. people or <laughs> a book that you've really uh, pushed towards people to... Uh, listen to with audiobooks now or to actually pick up a book and actually read it the bible no, i'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um i mean that is yes the bible hands down but um hmm that's a good question yeah i also enjoy reading too so it's like hundreds of books just came into my head um uh, what's a book that you have most recommended, whether it's friends or family, or mm. even just in this past week or two? Like, who, who have you been like, oh yeah, bro, like, you gotta read this book. Like, what is, yeah. what is that? Man. Dude, I don't know. I, <sighs> yeah, I don't think I could tell you, like, off the bat, I mean, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad this week, which was oh, really good. Um, incredible. Yeah, it was really, really good. Um, there were a couple of things that I found that were a little outdated in it. but Like the, what? Like what? I don't um, know. What was it? His process of... Um, shoot, I have it written down. Yeah, blow it up, man. <laughs> yeah, I actually read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, I actually listened to the audio book uh, a year back, man, and it was incredible. I listened to it twice, like, back to back. I was like, it ended really? on, like, on the chapter, and then I was like, all right, let's listen to it again. Dang. Like, I absolutely love that book. Um, I've been reading a book called um, How to Be Rich uh, by oh. Rumi. Bro, yeah. it's good. Yeah. Dude, like, that book is incredible. He literally breaks down um, how to be smart with your money, how to... Um, 
understand what the heck is a checking account, a savings account, what's a Roth IRA, mm. a four hundred one k. You know where, what to actually do with your money, because like you know, I think all parents or a lot of parents tend to push their kids just save, 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 um, and then you try to go ask your you know your parents, hey, so you know what do I do with this? And they just they kind of give some old methodical wisdom and it's like great that didn't help me yeah and so i've i've had to use uh youtube a lot to find uh people like graham stefan and uh -huh. Lee kevin and uh, a couple other people who have really kind of shaped how i think about money um but getting back to the book yeah um yeah tell us more about uh, rich dad poor dad yeah well i really enjoyed his breakdown of passive income mm -hmm. um especially when it, you're trying to you know reach that next level or uh, you know whatever um and i've noticed too with working with the internship that you know you can't do everything and passive income is kind of the thing where you just kind of store it away in something that's almost automatically running or you you delegate work or a task or something to someone and that passive income kind of increases mm -hmm. um, as you go on and um, yeah there was something about his whole housing uh, the chapter about houses and things like that it sounded outdated mm -hmm. um, but I mean outside of that I think the the principles hold true and yeah. I mean yeah that book came out in what the 90s or something it, it was a while ago I thought it was early 2000s maybe it was because I thought he made a couple revisions to it oh he um, might have but yeah w one of the things that was really fascinating was at nine years old you know he you know had his dad who had a PhD <laughs> and then his you know uh, that was his, he considered his poor dad because mm -hmm. he was just a slave to a nine to five yeah and his rich dad who owned multiple businesses probably had more of a headache but he was his own man he was his own boss and he you know worked for him for mm -hmm. free and it was like and he, you know he, he talks about that struggle of like I like I want to get paid for this right and he's like well as soon as you take a paycheck you lose like what you're working towards because then mm -hmm. when you have a paycheck you're like almost like a well i don't want to say slave but you're almost like a like you're just like okay it's just coming as long as i do this much work i clock in clock out i get that paycheck next week right in two weeks yeah and so um yeah with some of these other you know creative endeavors that we're all kind of going after where we're not seeing much return but it's something that we enjoy more and it's it's something i'm thinking about too is uh, cutting back a little bit like on one or two days a week yeah. on my job um, that brings in good cash flow but it's not something I really truly enjoy you know I can worry about the white picket fence and the nice car when I'm 37 right you know um, and and using those days to push more towards it because like my weeks are always so crazy because I can I can work as much as I want so I, I work as much as I can mm -hmm. you know so it's it's uh, understanding okay to sacrifice some money so that I can enjoy what I'm actually doing. Right. And eventually those can work up and, and, and be an income. Mm -hmm. um, but for right now, not to be so, because sometimes I get so caught up in that. I'm like, oh, well, I got yeah. I to gotta, I gotta get as much money as I can. And it's like, well, yeah, but you also got to enjoy what you're doing. Right. You know? Yeah. And I think to bring it almost a step further as well, like, you know, entrepreneurship, like, it doesn't guarantee a nice car a nice nope. house or anything generally it's the opposite yeah and you know i feel like that's the misconception generally like on youtube or mm -hmm. any social platform where it's you know you see this jacked guy waking up in the morning you know <laughs> riding his whatever boosted board and yeah he's yeah. riding <laughs> his boosted board to his audi or something <laughs> <laughs> it's like, right, right. you know he's in the city but you know like, it's not generally the case in terms of entrepreneurship and even a step further than that like sometimes like that's not set for us like that's not um the like god god has a place that within our lives you know right. he could you know we could be poor and you know not making a whole lot but you know if we are serving his kingdom 
serving his church and you know being a part of the body right. and bringing value and being a light to people i think that's the most important thing and i mean it definitely relates to entrepreneurship in the terms of you know we're not here to make money we're here to serve yeah. and to bring value to people mm -hmm. um but yeah i don't know something that i've been thinking about yeah, yeah, it's really true. Yeah, sometimes it's easy to get caught up with like, yeah, you see these other entrepreneurs or whatever else posting stuff, and it's like, yeah, for me, I've started to to think about that a bit more. Of like, yeah, what what does financial freedom look to me? Mm -hmm. Is like, yeah, maybe it's the most I ever make, you know, fluctuating even with you know a wife and kids is fifty thousand, like or forty thousand. Right. Like, that's it. Like, but I enjoy every single day, and I'm apart from spending time with family and garage sailing and whatever else, like. I would rather just come into the office and work a 12 hour day. Yeah. Like that's, that's my humble dream. Yeah. There's always going to be those sucky days. There's always going to be those times where it's not enjoyable, but I, I want to be able to, the, the things that I do enjoy, be able to scale those so that they can be my daily thing. Right. Because, you know, if they, if they're bringing me joy and happiness and I enjoy being able to help other people, um, I mean, that's my, that's my ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I, there was a question that I had, but it's it's gone now. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man, uh, did your camera go off? I don't think so. Okay. I think yeah. that one did. Yeah, it's like the twenty minute camera thing <laughs> or whatever we've experienced that with. Yeah, was, yeah. You just like, gotta, uh, like on the fly, you just got to keep rolling with it. Yeah, but, you do. But, but yeah, man. Uh, dang it! It's like I have the question right there. I know that you have a podcast. Um, yeah. Would you mind telling us more about that? Sure. Um, should we wait for Josh? Or? No, just go ahead. Okay, man. sure. Um, yeah, well, podcast is called In-House Podcast. And really, its origins are rooted in procrastination. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think last year in December, um, we were all studying for finals and... John being John, he's super charismatic and energetic was like, let's start a podcast. Mm -hmm. And I had already been thinking about it and had been thinking about doing a podcast or something for, oh man, probably like a year and a half, two years at that point. And I was like, yeah, I would love to do a podcast, but like, I've got to study for finals. Yeah. And he was like, come on, man, let's do it. Let's do it. And, um, Titus was there as well. The other co-host and was like, it sounds like fun we like let's just record something real quick and see right. where it goes uh, you know and if not we'll just keep it and laugh at it later and i was like okay cool and we all just kind of sat down and recorded and i think that night john created all the social media stuff for it and we're like okay we're a podcast now i guess we're we're doing it and yeah it was just funny how all the pieces clicked but um yeah i think our our um, kind of central theme that we talk about are um, like art, lifestyle, and just our faith. And we interview different people that kind of fall within those categories and really just kind of have an open, open-ended conversation about them or mm -hmm. yeah, with them right. and about them. And um, yeah, it's been really cool just to sit back and listen to people and hear their stories and how especially just how god has worked in their life it's just incredible um and you know sometimes even i don't know not being afraid of like the touchy subjects that are maybe a little bit deeper and kind of pinpointing those and talking about them because like there are times where all of us go through spots of depression or anxiety or yeah. what have you and it's been really revealing to just have an open-ended authentic conversation um with someone about that so yeah i'm really excited to see where the podcast goes and um yeah yeah it's been really cool so far awesome yeah Bye. Well, thanks, man, for coming on the podcast. Um, if people want to find uh, more about the projects you're working on, more about who you are, mm -hmm. uh, where do you want to direct people? Um, man, well, you can go to my Instagram. I think it's 
Noah Wainwright underscore 99 or something like that. And then um, if you want to listen to my music, I'm on Bandcamp, um, These Quiet Eyes. Um, so check it out. Please but, do. It's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> appreciate it's good. it, man. But yeah, thank you guys for, for having me on and um, super stoked to see what the future holds for you guys. Yeah.